but on the Andy Moore Automotive Group hotline, there's been a landslide of folks out there that want to hear from Rick Venturi regarding what the Colts have done in free agency so far, how they've approached free agency at this point, and maybe a little bit as far as a month away or so from the NFL draft. And Rick Venturi is on the Andy Moore Automotive Group hotline. I'm going to take a deep breath because I am damn glad you're back. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's good to it's good to be on with you. You know, uh, uh, Florida is fun. Uh, you know, I've been putting in, as you know, uh, because you follow it and we do talk. I, I've been putting tons of work in on the draft. Um, you know, we can talk a little bit about that today. I'm well along on that study, and uh, we will we will knock it dead here together in a month. But uh, you know, and uh, obviously following what the Colts do. Um, and I think sometimes there's an advantage, um, and I think you understand this, to doing it from a distance where you're not, um, you're not involved with the sycophants and, you know, the people that are going to, you know, no matter what, it's going to be a great move. I, you know, I'm able to kind of sit back and look at it from a, a much more objective standpoint, you know, and I, you know, to, you know, to kind of, uh, to kind of respond to your lead in. Um, you know, I think the Colts are basically, you know, basically doing what they do. You know, they don't, uh, you know, they don't get in the market for Ferraris. You know, they wait until that second day to that used car market uh, comes available. And I, I don't have really a lot of problem with that. I, you know, they've been, you know, they've been very good right now. Uh, right now, Chris Ballard has so much capital, draft capital, um, because of his success last year that, you know, basically he's going to get the benefit of the doubt at this point on every single move. Um, what I see, uh, you know, and it's been a real, you know, financially sound approach, which we knew it would be because they preach it uh, ad nauseum, is that you know they, they you know they've they basically done a lot with their own guys, um, so I mean in that sense uh, when you do that, I think you're ensuring that you don't take a step backward. You you, you ensure you get all those guys signed, Lewinsky, Gathers, uh, all that gang that has been re-signed, and you you're ensuring that you at least start the season, you know, with the same team that you ended the season, uh, you know, other than Kansas City on a really high three months. You know, so, you know, that part of it's been there uh, in the two free agents of note that they've signed. You know, they're short-term deals, um, which is smart. Uh, you know, you, you really have no long-term investment, so you're not – you're not ransoming off the future, uh, you know, when guys like Hilton and various guys are going to come up in the next couple of years, which is really important. Teams that do that, that spend, you know, overspend on one or two guys, then they end up, they end up flattening off pretty quick. So, you know, I see them as a team that, you know, certainly hasn't taken a step forward. I mean, set, taken a step backwards. Now, going forward, uh, I think – you know, I do. I've always liked Houston. Uh, I'm not delusional. This is this is not the Houston of 214. If anybody watched the videos that we did when we got ready to play Kansas City, because I studied them extensively, you know, I said it wasn't the the, the Houston of 214, but it was still a good good football player. I think in both Houston. Uh, and Funches, what they've got is they've got pieces. They've got guys, to me, who are situational guys, guys that can help them in certain situations. Uh, I think with Houston, you're not going to get the down-in, down-out guy that you had in 214 before the ACL, but you're going to get a guy who can still get to the passer. He finished strong. Last year was the best year in his last four with nine and a half sacks, I thought he finished the season extremely well. You know, he had that great sack against us when they lined him up on, on Glowinski on the right side, when they lined him up inside next to Ford, and uh, he just blew right by him. And, I, I, you know, I thought that was, you know, we, we saw some of the versatility that he has. 
I've always liked him. He was a very, he was a great athlete coming out of Georgia. You know, he was a, you know, 4'6'3 guy, 4'6'2, 36 and a half vertical, 4'3'7 short shuttle and 30 reps. I mean, he was, he was really, and a good football player on tape. He had everything that you wanted. Now, the reason he slipped the three, he had some off field issues. Um, you know, he's obviously had a terrific career. You know, the highlight being the 214 with 22. He is a guy that can turn the edge. He's not, he's not the blazer like Ford. You know, he is, I referred to him, if you remember, when he got ready to play him as the power forward. He is a guy that still has a little wiggle on the edge. He's got really good reach. I mean, he is a guy that can strip the quarterback, and he's done it enough. You know, he's played enough times. Uh, you know, you don't have the numbers that he has over the years. Um, you, you know, in 70, 78 and a half sacks, you don't you don't do that without <laughs> knowing how to get there. And he has the ability to strip the ball. I think he's had 118 quarterback hits. So I mean, that's there. What he does very best is if you can get him matched up on tackles that overset, you know, particularly on that right side, you get him to, to get on guys that will overset. He is a great what we refer to as speed-to-power guy. That's where I come up with the term power forward. He is a guy that if you set soft, he will push you. He will drive you right back into the quarterback. So, you know, obviously I, this is a guy that, you know, he I think at this stage in his career, um, he's a guy that can situationally rush the passer for us. Um, and, I, and I think he's a guy that has tools. And when you've done it, as long as he had, you're going to demand, you know, certain kinds of protection. I mean, even, you know, Ted Marchabrody used to say, I always quote him on this, he used to say, you know, in the NFL, once you get a reputation, they're going to they're gonna play you. They're going to worry about you. He used to say, if you, if you get a reputation uh, as an early riser, <laughs> you can sleep till noon and get by with it. Well, you know, I, I do think that he will demand, um, you know, certain types of protection which will help the rest of the team. So, you know, I think, and it's a, you know, it's really a short-term contract. Um, the money's there. It's not like it's there. It's not a, it's not a, a steal from the future. Uh, it's a guy that can help us right now. Obviously, Chris is very familiar. So, you know, when you bring an older 30-year-old guy into the building, you know, you do want that fit. You know, that really is important. Um, and so, you know, this is a guy, another guy that we know everything that we need to know about them. And uh, so I, I, I see that as being a real help. You immediately establish uh, yourself with a, a very, if nothing else, solid edge rusher now. So Rick Venturi talking about Justin Houston. He's on the Andy Moore Automotive Group hotline. I don't know if you are made aware of this or not because this just came down within the last hour. But apparently the Colts um, are hosting Shane Ray, linebacker formerly of the Broncos over there today too so there and and, yeah, and again, i like you, ray i don't know what they're going to do with ray i like yeah. ray you know he was in a lot of fast company over there at denver with their top guys um uh you know with vaughn miller and then you know the kid that they drafted chubb i mean you know he's kind of a he's kind of an odd man out as was barrett i like barrett also from that team i mean, those guys are you know good rushers that you know are just in heavy traffic because you've got tremendous investment players ahead of them so yeah i'd like for them to uh you know i would not be i would not have any trouble with ray and of course ray's just the opposite of houston ray's the guy that's young you know that uh you, you know you may be able to play long range you, you don't have any issue with uh three four to four three for justin houston at all well, not really, because you know he, you know the the, the defenses today, John, because of the nickel defenses, because of, you play nickel sixty seven percent of the time, and the three four guys, the hybrids become defensive ends. You know whether you stand up and rush or hand in a dirt rush, it really doesn't make any difference. He's done so much of that. I don't, you know, I I don't. Um, it would be it's different. It's 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 harder to go the other way if you go from a, a hand in the dirt to a 3-4 linebacker, that is a much difficult, more difficult transition. But to go from a 3-4 guy to a 4-3 guy, that's, a, that, that's actually a very easy transition.
position. And the other thing I should say about Houston, Houston is a very strong guy at the point. You, if you, I go back to that. I actually went back to my videos from the uh, when we got ready to play the Chiefs, and one of my recommendations that week was to run at Ford, and we did. And Ford made the you know that hit in the line. I, I always wanted us to run at Ford because I thought he was light. And don't run at Houston because Houston is a guy that can really take people on. He's not a you know because he was a three four linebacker. He had to learn how to play on that edge. So he's not he he can two gap the edge. He's not a guy that compromises the run to play the pass, which I've always liked. And that's of course that's the advantage of a three four guy. But no, I don't think in this case. I think the transition from three four backer to four three end is actually quite easy. Um. All right. Would you have rather had – the reason why I asked this, Rick, is because apparently the Colts had some interest in D. Ford, and then it came down to what he was going to get paid afterwards, and then you had to trade for him, and that was draft picks, and, you know, yeah. they didn't want to release yeah. that. But who would you rather have with this Colts defense, Ford well, I would or have Houston? Rather had Ford. I, I would have rather had Ford, and, I, and, and that's not – and that's not to knock Houston because I like Houston. Right. I like this acquisition. It's a uh, you know it's very cost efficient. Uh, it's short term. Um, it's a, you're renting him really, and he's a good guy with nine sacks a year ago. Played good down the stretch. Uh, you know if you ask me to compare him though, I, I'm I treasure speed, and then we'll get into that with Funchess. I treasure speed. Ford has that lightning speed off the edge that you can't coach. Plus he's a lot younger, a lot fresher just coming into his own you're getting Ford you're getting Ford at the you know at the you know kind of at the prime on the way you're you're getting Houston and you're going to squeeze some good situational stuff out of here at the end which I think we can't you know I'm not I'm not and I'm not at all making that a, a a bad thing but if you ask me straight up Ford or Houston I really like Ford now Ford you're going to have to you're going to have to trade for him and long-term contract and all that stuff and obviously uh Chris didn't want to go there. Yeah, no you know, doubt Chris, about Chris, Chris, Chris gambles at Hoosier Park. He doesn't go to Binion's. <laughs> you know, you mentioned that a little bit earlier. Chris, Chris handles free agency with all this money and his spending really like 90% of the NFL players should handle their salaries and what they – seriously – you know, no, I mean, you know what and, I mean? and, and the and, thing, the other thing about it is, you know, I think there's a, I do agree that there's a value that you place on each player because that first, that first four days of Ferrari, I mean, that's 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 overpricing. Every everybody is really, really overpriced uh, in that situation, uh, and so you know, I don't, I don't think that necessarily proves anything. Plus, we have a lot of top guys coming up that's go, that that we need to resign to keep the core going. I mean. You know, you got, I mean, you got Costanzo coming up. You'll have Hilton. I mean, there's a lot of guys coming up that you have to make sure that you get signed to long-term deals. So, you know, you know, being frugal is is in many ways smart. You know, and and then I think you got to be very careful where you put your money. Now, the fact that, you know, like one of the writers in uh, in, in 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 town said, well, this is, you know, Houston was the best guy on the market. Well, he's the best guy on the market because nobody gets rid of their rush. I mean, you know, you had yeah. you, you had nine, ten, you know, top rushers. They're all franchised, and Ford was moved because I think Kansas City is in a total change on defense. I think, you know, they know they've got a good offense, and they've decided, you know, just you know, crap can their defensive coordinator, crap can their system, and let's rebuild this defense totally. So I think everybody was, you know, every, you know, everybody was uh, ready for the hangman there. Um, but uh, you know, most of those rushers are never getting out of dodge. So what you were what you were down to if you weren't going to trade to, for Ford is the older type of guys like Matthews, like Houston, like Ansa, you know. Uh, and so you know, I'm 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 fine with this because that's you know that's kind of the best of the rest. That's what you're going to do, and you know you don't want to invest now. You know, when we get to Funches, that's a little bit different. I, I'm, you know, I've never, I've never been real high on Funches because I treasure speed. I, you know, grew up in the era of Al Davis, and you know, I treasure uh, speed as a wide receiver. 
speed as a defensive corner guy. And, you know, Funchess is just not a real fast guy. I, I thought Funchess, when he came out, you know, he, he wasn't very fast and he was never a natural catcher. Um, I thought, and most of my people, most of the people in my world thought that Funchess would end up going back and becoming a tight end like he was early in his college career in becoming more of a hybrid, uh, you know, kind of like Ebron, you know, more of that big hybrid tight end that would be a tough matchup for people inside because he was never going to be that outside fluid guy. Now, I will say one thing, you know, production-wise, he's an average 40 catch guys a year. So, you know, if Chris didn't have all the all the capital credibility he has, that, that contract may have been a come-on man uh, contract. But it's a one-year rent-a-wreck. It's, uh, in some ways, it's, it's um, uh, Grigson-esque in the Howard Bay and, you know, Donnie yeah. Avery. I mean, it's, it's, it's another kind of a one-year um, take a look at a guy. Now, this is a young kid at 26. And I do think that when I, I go back to situations, I talked a little bit about Houston, you know, counting on him in key situations maybe to make a difference. Maybe not down in and di- down out, but critical situations. Funches, I think, is, a, is kind of a complementary part. You know, he brings something that we don't have um, in the size and the girth um, you know, he's a bank board guy, uh, a power forward, if you will, on the offensive side of the ball, you know, to go with a much smaller Hilton, uh, Rogers, those kinds of guys. Now, um, I think where, you know, where they could utilize him is, you know, you utilize him on third down in what, what is the, what I call the third and short window, two to seven where you're going to get tight man-to-man coverage and he can body up a guy, you know, for a slant. Or, you know, he's a guy that, you know, maybe maybe bring some red zone threat to us with the fade, back fade game uh, because of his, you know, superior size and girth. I would have much rather, but it would have taken a four-year deal uh, you know, I, I really was hoping that we would be on Terrell Williams. I, you know, for the Raiders to get Antonio Brown and Terrell Williams, that is yeah. absolutely amazing. Cause I, you know, Brown is Brown is six years uh, of 1200 yards or better in a row. But I thought Terrell Williams was the, maybe the best under the radar player that was out there. And, but he, I guess he, I think they gave him a four year deal. Maybe it was 14 million a year. I'm not sure, but you know, that's the kind of guy I think that is more of a game changer, but I will say that in Funches's case, again, you're renting him, you're renting him for a year. Um, if you can get that complimentary part out of him, that situational part out of him, then, you know, he can only help. You think uh, one year, I wonder what his market was. I had him on, and obviously when you kind of allude to that, it it kind of you know pisses him off a little bit because I think they're you're, that I'm saying. There must I can't not be imagine it was great. I mean, he's not. But he's what, not one, even one in year like football. that, it doesn't sound like it was great. Yeah. I mean, it's a pro foot. He's not even in pro football focus top 100. So I mean, I mean, not that I not that I care about pro football focus, but you know, I mean, the the, the production is what it is or lack of, but. I will say this, that if you're going to get a guy and you're going to go that way and you're not going to, you know, you're not going to go big time, you're not going to go play, uh, you know, Texas Hold'em at, at Binion's, then you try to get a guy who at least brings attributes, bring traits that you don't have, and that trait is the big target, again, in critical situations like, you know, third and two to five, or in that low red zone where you're, you know, where we need a guy. And that's been a struggle for us. We, you know, we have Ebron, who's a great matchup in there, but we haven't had a wideout who's a bank board because Hilton, Hilton gets real small right down in there. You know, that's not his game. And so, you know, I, I, I see this. If you're going to go, if you're going to go second and third tier and be economically sound on everything you do, you know, then what you're trying to do is find complementary parts. Uh, Rick Venturi, he's on the Andy Moore Automotive Group Hotline. We talked a little bit about uh, Justin Houston, Devin Funches, and at least Shane Ray coming in today, uh, reportedly, and uh, getting a look-see over by the uh, the Colts. Um, well, here's, assuming- the, here's, the, here's the 
a reason, I think, for that, John. Okay. And I know that the Colts have done their due diligence, and I certainly have. And, you know, I, you know when we talked six weeks ago on my exit, you know, I had just taken a quick glance at the draft, to be honest with you. I, 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 really, wasn't, I really wasn't in great shape to talk about it. I made some observations. But now, you know, six weeks later and four hours a day grinding away at it, you know, yes – uh, this is a. I think it's a good draft. I think it's a really good draft. I, I think we can come out of there with good players. Um, and yes, there are some terrific defensive front guys. But the way I have it figured in, in my grading system, I have ten players that I would rate as blue chip. You know, I don't know if Ambien's the word till they prove that. But in terms of draft choices, I have ten blue chip front five guys. That's that's not that's not linebackers. That's edge guys. Now they could be a linebacker like a like a Josh Allen from Kentucky. But I have I have ten players that I rate that blue chip. You know, and then you go into, you know, kind of the two Tylenol go. You go you go into the red players. You go into good players, but not necessarily premier guys. So the problem is, even though it looks great, it may look great at the top, but by 26, when you get to 26, if you don't package and move up, what you might be looking at, you might be looking at a really top player, but he may not be that defender like you had hoped to get, like that, you know, everybody says, well, go get a rusher and a receiver. Yeah, well, you know, it doesn't always work that way, and that's why I think, you know, if you get Ray, you're going to sign two rushers. You've already signed a receiver. But, I mean, I can see the 26th pick being a really, really top-tier player that maybe isn't the need guy. Like, for instance, if Hawkinson – if Hawkinson, the tight end from Iowa, makes it uh, to 26, that's a blue chipper. And with Doyle messed up like he's been, that's a guy you might have to look at just because he's a premier talent rather than t- – that is a blue talent at tight end rather than a red talent at, at, at the rush or at the defensive tackle. Not that you couldn't get a solid player there. Uh, there are four, I think, blue offensive linemen. And, you know, because of that defensive push on the top, and I think you'll have three quarterbacks that will go high, um, you know, you've got two really top linebackers. So some of those guys, like a tight end, and there's only one great tight end. There's, there's some hybrids like fine, that are really good, but there's one great tight end, that's Hawkinson. They can do it all. But then you've got some offensive linemen that are – there are four of them, I think, that are blue-chip guys. Williams from Alabama, Taylor from Florida, Ford from Oklahoma, and Dillard uh, from uh, Washington State. I mean, I think you've got four guys of which you, can get a, you could get a top guard, a top tackle. So, I mean, those are, those are possibilities. Those are things. And the position that I've really – I took a quick look at and didn't really have it accurate, in my opinion, until I started looking at a lot of tape. The, the position that does not necessarily look like a top ten position, with maybe the exception of Medcalf, Medcalf because of his tremendous combine work, I mean, he, he probably lifted himself. But the position that I think is really good at the bottom of one and all through two is the wide receiver position. I just I really like it, and I I like a lot of guys in there. I've got some more uh, Reservoir All Stars in there, uh, some top tier guys that if you're willing to utilize um, ones and twos, I I think you can come up with a receiver like Funchess with speed. And you you know there's some great slots in there. I mean there's just a a lot of different kinds of players. So I mean when you look at it, I think there'll be a top tier offensive lineman. Maybe that tight end might slip just because of the position value, um, you know. And then, uh, you know, what, what I just talked about there, uh, the wide receiver position. I think there's, you know, I, like I said, not necessarily a top ten Lynn Swan guy, but man, there are a lot of different kinds of guys that I really like, and um, you know, so it'll be it'll be interesting. It, I, I think that, like I said, but I think the reason for you know trying to get that edge rush guy is. I'm not sure that the top-tier guy that there ever is going to be one at 26. 
So you got to look at it that way, and I am. I'm going to give you a little preview. I mentioned it to you today when we talked. I'm going to have a new. I'm going to have a new category. This is a really an interesting year, and we don't certainly have to get into it now, but we will get into it in the coming weeks. I'm going to have. Uh, you know, I always have my Morse Reservoir All Stars. You know, guys that I just absolutely love on film that might be just a little bit under the radar, regardless of where they come from. But this year, I'm going to have my Cicero All Stars. And uh, anybody that knows me well knows that when I'm home in Indy, I hang out in Cicero at all the restaurants and uh, all the places in Cicero. It's my it's my favorite small town in the country, much less right. Indiana. And so this year, there is a number, an unusual number of smaller school kids that really are are very, very good prospects. And so I'm going to try to hit those when we get into them. Um, a lot of small school kids that really, uh, really have impressed me. They'll be my Cicero All-Stars. And I will tell you, a kid I really, really like for the fans there locally in, in Indianapolis is I think McLaren from Cathedral has just if, – if I don't think anyone with maybe the exception of Sweat – from uh, Mississippi State, I don't think anybody has helped their cause more since the season. But I, I mean doing it in the right way, not by some flash in the pan. But he had a great senior bowl week. I've looked at all the tape from down there. I thought he had a great combine running that 4-3-5. I think he shocked everybody. And he is really a good football player. And he's just another one of those receivers that – Nobody was talking about six weeks ago that is in that big list if, you, if you're willing to, you know, to make the decision. Now you've got to sort it out, and you've got to really kind of determine what you want. Yep. Yep, there is Rick Venturi right there. He's on the Andy Moore Automotive Group Hotline, and we're going to work you out coming up here in the next month or so in preparation for the 2019 NFL Draft. And Rick on the Andy Moore Automotive Group Hotline. It is good to hear your voice, my brother. It really is. I hope you're having a great vacation, and uh, we'll fire it up for a whole lot more coming up in the next month. Yeah, John, it's it's good. I enjoy it. This really, this is my second home. You know, I've, I've been here right. right right in the same place for over 40 years. So it's uh, it's uh, it's right up there on the Morris Reservoir and right down here on the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, I do manage to get several hours a day because I can't, I just can't live without it on that tape. And uh, I, I have had a lot of fun. I I'm I'm really ready to come back. I'm I'm glad you called me. I'm ready to get back in the game. Awesome. Thanks for coming on today, and uh, we'll keep in touch and do it again coming up uh, here soon as far as the draft is concerned, Rick. Thank you. All right, John. Talk to you. Good to hear from you. Rick Venturi on the Andy Moore Automotive Group Hotline. 